Unconscious Bias in Recruitment and Selection When recruiting, we are often fairly confident that we will find the best person for the job. We get the person with the best CV, the best skills profile, the right experience. We convince ourselves that we ask the right questions, weigh up the evidence, and make a rational decision. But scientific research suggests that we add a much less objective set of information into the mix when we are selecting people. In 2016, a Sheffield Hallam University study gave employers identical, hypothetical CVs that met all the criteria stated in the job description. Some CVs had an accompanying photo of fat or thin people, and some had no photo. Employers were asked to rate the CVs on a suitability score out of 42. They found that men of a normal weight received an average score of 39, while the obese men scored 25. For women of normal weight, the average score was 35, while obese women scored 23. Overall, CVs without an accompanying photo scored 30, which was higher than the scores for the obese men and women. The researchers concluded that obese men and women are less likely to be employed because of their weight. But this research also highlighted the difference in the employer's rating of equally suitable men and women. But it's not just weight and gender that are affected. In 2010, UK researchers sent out 3,000 CVs for real jobs. They put a common Caucasian name at the top of 1,000 CVs, an Asian name at the top of 1,000, and an African name at the top of 1,000. They were the same CVs, only the names varied. They found that if you had a Caucasian name, you typically waited for nine applications before you got an interview. If you had an Asian or African name, you waited for 16 applications, on the same CV. The scientific research suggests that this effect is more likely to be unintentional, driven by patterns wired into our unconscious brains and neural pathways, influenced by our background, cultural environment, personal experiences, and also by the media we are exposed to. Similar research from Sweden suggests that we are likely to sift out people who gained their qualifications in another country. We also seem hardwired to prefer tall people, particularly tall men, as leaders. We unconsciously see more attractive people as more socially competent, and see names that are more familiar or easy to pronounce as more competent. We seem to prefer to be with people who are like us, that look like us, sound like us, share our social background, interests or education. Brain scans show that we make these rapid, automatic and unconscious judgments about people in less than one-fifth of a second, faster than our eyes can even process the person's face. By the time our thoughtful, objective brain kicks in, after about half a second, it is too late to stop these judgments affecting our people's decisions. We then simply reshape the facts to fit what our unconscious has already decided. This does not just happen when sifting job applications. After all, we can rarely tell from a CV if someone is overweight. It happens at interview, in assessment centres, and in the casual conversations we may have with candidates. But we convince ourselves that the decision was made on hard, objective evidence. So if a white Caucasian man is on the recruitment panel, then he is likely to unconsciously prefer the candidate that looks like him. Or the cyclist on the panel prefers the candidate who also cycles. Or the mum favours the person who has just returned from a parental leave. We are naturally drawn to people that we have commonalities with. We find comfort in what we know, regardless of whether we believe this to be the right choice. This can manifest itself in a bias recruitment process, such as the earlier examples of weight and gender bias. By letting these unconscious preferences for some types of people affect our people's decisions, we may let the real talent slip through our fingers by fishing from only part of the talent pool, but who could bring real creativity innovation and customer or community perspective to the job. Studies show that workplaces with greater diversity report increased adaptability, productivity and more effective execution of strategy due to the broader variety of viewpoints and strengths that come from the workforce. Typically, they can also offer broader services too by drawing on the different languages and cultural understanding of their workforce. So how do we overcome this issue? Firstly, by acknowledging unconscious bias does exist and, if allowed, will affect the recruitment process. Then, designing and following a truly selective and robust recruitment process that clearly defines the behavioural skills and capabilities, as well as the experience required for the role. And finally, 
track and report on the profile of candidates that apply, are shortlisted and ultimately recruited for a role. This helps to identify whether certain types of candidates are being deselected or affected by unconscious bias in the selection process. After all, as the well-known Muslim quote says, a lot of different flowers makes a bouquet.